Carl Rowe, Fox News contributor, joins us. Now let's talk about the Republicans first there in Iowa. Ron DeSantis was on Fox and Friends yesterday, and this is how he explained how he thinks he can win that state. We're competing everywhere. Iowa is very important. We've got an incredible amount of support. I got endorsed by 37 legislators there before I even announced my candidacy. We obviously have a lot in common with Iowa in terms of what Florida has done and what they've done under Co Governor Kim Reynolds. And I think the groundswell of support has been really, really strong. And, you know, we're going to press the case. Carl, how's it looking so far as we I know Iowa's in the distance, but it's not that far away. No, it's not that far away, and uh, it appears that uh, DeSantis has uh, adopted what has been a winning strategy in the past, and that is he's promised to visit all 99 counties, he's put a strong emphasis on getting local endorsements, and he's going to have a grassroots army already uh, through, through a super PAC. Uh, they've knocked on over 100,000 doors of likely uh, caucus goers, and they're going to keep at it. And this kind of strategy has worked before. Take a look at this. This is the Iowa poll, which is a widely respected poll. Uh, and by, run by a woman named Seltzer. Uh, in 2007, Mike Huckabee was at 3% in June. He was at 27% in November and won with 34%. Rick Santorum, he was at 4% in June of 2011, 6% hmm. in, uh, in November, and won in January with 25%. And then in 2016, Ted Cruz, again, similar strategy, visit all 99 counties, put a strong emphasis on uh, uh, winning the evangelical vote, 5% in, in May, 10% in October, and 28% and won in, uh, in, in February of 2016. So uh, DeSantis has a similar strategy. We'll see if it works. Um, the last time that somebody who led in the early polls uh, was the winner on on, primer, on caucus night was 2000. And, uh, uh, you know, D Donald Trump won in 2020 with no opposition, obviously, but in a contested race. But Carl, last sorry, time who, the front who is was the front runner on election day? Uh, who does Ann Seltzer have in the lead today? Well, she has Donald Trump in the lead and Ron DeSantis in second place. Uh, and uh, but again, the point is, it's a variable state. They mm -hmm. take their they first of all, they, they take their job seriously. That's why they want you to visit their county and visit the county as many times as possible. And second of all, it's why they make up their mind late. Uh, this happened on the Democratic side as well. You may remember that in 2007, Hillary Clinton was well ahead of Barack Obama in the state, and it was not until November of the year uh, that, uh, that, that Obama began to move with a dramatic speech in late November at the Jefferson Jackson Day dinner. And, but having had built the network of people in the state who could take that burst of enthusiasm that came as people came to make a decision and sort of grab a hold of those people and then turn them out on uh -huh. caucus night, mm. that, that's what's really critical to winning in a caucus. So DeSantis will be there for the next few days. Trump arrives on Thursday in Iowa. Thursday. And that's on the Republican side. Dana? Carl, this is something that I would have, you know, it's like one of those things that if I saw you in the hallway at the White House, I would have loved to ask you this. So let me just ask in front of America. Uh, it is true, historically, that most presidents get a second term in America. It's rare that they don't. But it does happen. And we certainly saw Carter, George H.W. Bush, Trump. What's that, what, what does history tell you about the current moment and where Biden is right now and that scenario? Well, I'm going to write about it this week for the Wall Street Journal. In fact, ah. I'm pounding away. <laughs> I got up early this morning. I'm writing about this exact topic. Uh, Look, I think the problem for Joe Biden is that people do not see him as a strong leader. And more importantly, they see him as too old to be effective. And I'm going to be talking about the polls that reflect that. Nothing is going to change the fact. Nothing's going to make him look younger. I mean, that's just not going to change. And I think that the fact that he's, that he's seen as too old is in a direct relationship to people seeing him as not strong enough to be an effective president. And, mm. and that's a bad place to be. I mean, he's, he's okay, in, it looks like, inside the Democratic Party. But when Robert Kennedy, who has only his last name to give him anything, is running at 20 percent, and Marianna Williamson is running at 10 percent, so you have a third of Democrats already saying, I'm looking for somebody else, and, and, and there's little to commend either one of those other two people. I mean, it's, a, it's a yeah. pretty remarkable. The president is in a weak place even within his own party, and I think potentially even weaker in a general election because neither one of these things, a belief that he's too old and a belief that he's not strong enough, neither one of those things is going to improve over the next two years. Think
think about the campaign year, that yeah. Jackie Heinrich just described, relying on surrogates and celebrities and social media. Not not a lot of ton of campaigning. Maybe an occasional trip to to Philadelphia, looking for Democratic votes in the state of Pennsylvania. So um, it'll be an interesting campaign. Maybe one that we have not seen quite before in our lifetime in the modern media and television age. Carl, great to see you. Talk to you later in the week. Okay. Thanks, Carl. Thank you, Bill. You All bet. the best. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.